companies that um, that are behind all this. Um, you know, I'm sure I'm sure if marijuana were legal, the pharmaceutical companies would sort of leap in to to you know make it a product that they could work with. But um, no, I really think it's a sort of diluted mentality. I mean, just as it was in the prohibition era, um, and you know, how can we? I mean, marijuana is a gateway drug to Doritos, um, but it's not really a gateway drug to anything else. No study has ever proven that, and yet we're spending just an insane amount of money policing against that one drug. And it's really, you know, I mean, all the problem in, in Mexico, which feeds into our illegal immigration problem here, um, is a lot of it is coming from the trade of marijuana. And so we're sort of propping up drug cartels, in my opinion. A gateway drug to what? Doritos. Like the chips? Yes. I mean, you know, there's, everyone always says, oh, we can't, we can't legalize marijuana because if you smoke marijuana, then you're going to start doing cocaine, and then you're going to be on heroin, and there's really no evidence for that. Um, and, uh, you know, some people use marijuana and go into harder drugs, but many, many, many people do not. I mean, uh, we've been reading excerpts again from uh, Nisha Glenny's article today, The View in the Washington Post. The collapse of communism and the rise of globalization in the late 1980s and early 1990s gave transnational criminality a tremendous boost. The expansion of world trade and financial markets has provided criminals ample opportunity to broaden their activities, but there has been no comparable increase in the ability of the Western world to police global crime. This other point that international mobsters, unlike terrorists, don't seek to bring down the West, they just want to make a buck. That's right, and you know, as we know now, the Taliban um, and probably Al Qaeda too is being largely financed by uh, the opium trade. I mean, they're getting into it for real, and with 90% of the world's heroin coming out of Afghanistan now, I mean, that's a that's a that's a big market. So, you know, we look at why is the Taliban coming back? Well, it's partly that Pakistan won't go in and 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 kind of take care of them where it can, but it's also because um, what we're doing in Afghanistan, we're doing the same drug eradication programs as we did in Colombia, which just alienates farmers further to us and softens the ground for Taliban sympathizers, and then, you know, they get to profit off the drug trade. Home in Alabama is next for Clara Jeffrey of Mother Jones Magazine. Good morning. Thanks for waiting on the Republican line. Uh, happy to do that. Uh, I understand that the, the question is personal question relative for our guest today. And uh, then we've been talking about drugs. I'll ask you a couple of personal questions. Are you a user of marijuana? No. Have you ever smoked marijuana? Yes. All right. So you're not what I'd call an objective person of this. And well, the other how I would just challenge you on that. I mean, um, I'm about to turn 40, and I can't remember exactly what the number is, but it's somewhere over 80% of people my age have smoked marijuana at least once. So well, I, I would I'm ask sorry. you, do you drink alcohol? Uh, I have drank alcohol. Exactly. Alcohol is not illegal. Well, it is uh, not illegal, but it used to be. So uh, uh, Yeah, but I'm not quite that old. I'm old, but not quite that old, young lady. But let me ask you another question. <clears throat> uh, your position is that the country is in the worst shape it's ever been in. Is that right? Did I hear you say that earlier? Certainly the worst shape in my lifetime. Uh, in, your, in your lifetime. Well, how do you explain the low unemployment rate? How do you explain home ownership being up? How do you explain all these things, and yet we're in the worst shape we've ever been in? Well, we're about to see uh -huh. home ownership uh, plummet quite a bit, I'm afraid. I mean, the subprime mortgages uh, crisis that's going on right now is going to see a lot of people lose their homes. And as for unemployment, the way this, I mean, it, it's not, you know, it's not like we're in the Great Depression or anything, but the way those numbers are counted, if you've been unemployed for a certain amount of time, you just sort of fall off. You know, they, they really only count the newly unemployed for a certain amount of time. So, you know, unemployment is not that high. We're lucky in that respect. Um, but, uh, you know, the, 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 more, the subprime mortgage crisis and everything that's going on in the economy, unfortunately, I think, is, is really ominous for all of us. Another article, Sea Change, as climate change melts the permafrost, Arctic villages slip into the sea, taking a, a way of life with them. And uh, is it Robert Knopf who wrote the piece, uh, Get Used to uh, it? Robert Knopf is a photographer, and Julia Witte is the, is the writer of the piece. So from these photographs, uh, these are uh, scenes from the north coast of Alaska. And the message is what? Well, what's going on in the north coast is, um, and, and throughout the Arctic, uh, is that the permafrost is melting due to climate change. And when permafrost melts, um, 
you know, the ice in permafrost is literally what's holding the 